Hey team, so one thing that kind of came up in my Patreon Discord server, yes, we have a Discord server where we talk about astrology, magic, and currently conquistadors, so if that sounds fun to you, make sure to sign up for my Patreon. But one thing that came up that's worth talking about is determining the heliacal rising of certain fixed stars. Um, and this topic came up as we were trying to talk about like when they were and how to utilize them a little bit better in astrological magic. Um, and so one thing that was kind of pointed out in that discussion that's worth talking about is that calculating the heliacal rise is actually very difficult, um, but I have found an online I found a program online that can help you determine when the heliacal rise of fixed star will be for your location. That's really kind of the problem with heliacal rises. They differ um, for different locations in the world. And I wanted to make this video talking about it because the program kind of looks like it was made in the 1990s and it isn't like super user friendly or kind of intuitive. So I just kind of wanted to walk through kind of what I found, how to work with it. So I'm going to walk through where to find this program and kind of how to use it for finding the heliacal rising of fixed stars. And then later we'll talk about kind of the importance of heliacal rising, why you would want to do that. Because I hate it in YouTube videos where they're like, hey, I'm going to teach you how to do this thing. And then spend like 10 minutes talking about how like the, their journey to it. Um, so let's kind of go ahead and get started. So first you want to go to alcyon-ephemeris.info um, to get to the homepage of the Alcyon software website. Um, and this is the just, you know, the homepage. Go to the software check out the uh, Planetary Stellar and Lunar Visibility tab. And this is the program that you're gonna wanna get. Head over to download, grab it down here, and get it, install it, all that good jazz. And once you're done with that um, and you run it, you'll get this kind of box here. And yes, for those of you who are, um, for the first time seeing my desktop, I am uh, a, a Digimon fan. I've got the shirt, I've got the other shirt, I've got the Digivice AirPod covers. I have an old Digimon phone case. I've got the Patamon and the Crest, obviously. I've got the cell phone ringtone. And I've got the, the action figure of Patamon evolving into Holy Anjumon, so that's pretty cool. So yeah, Digimon's kind of my thing. There's a fun little personal tidbit, but now back to this. Um, so this is what the program kind of looks like when you first get it. And uh, initially it's set for the sun um, so you can kind of see the visibility of it how you know it gets this this white part gets bigger during the summer months because the sun is up longer and then kind of slims, slims down as you get through the fall and winter months because the sun sets earlier then um, so there are a couple of settings that are worth checking out to to make sure we're right um, you can do colors if you want but show grid can kind of make it a little bit easier you have like the, the first day of the month here um, and, and hours down here. So this the grid can kind of help with readability a little bit, but we're not gonna use it a whole bunch, but it's cool if you want it. Another non-default setting you might wanna check is to use daylight savings time if you're in a, if you're in a location that does use it. Um, you can kind of, this, I actually think this is kind of funny. It's easier to see if I take the grid off, but it's like this jarring jump to the side where daylight savings time begins and ends, which is kind of a humorous way to think about it. Um, but we're gonna put our grid back on. Another one you might wanna put is, um, show dates of visibility phenomenon it's not currently um available because we're talking about the sun right now but in other ones it will be so when this does become available make sure to check it i'll be sure to go do that in a second um and this will put little little uh, marks on things to help it easier to see when things change um so the uh, you want to make sure that the year is correct make sure to change that to whatever the current year is i don't remember what the default one was and then you want to move over here to places and make sure that the that you know a place close to you is indicated. I've got Dallas, um, which was a place that was auto, automatically included in the list, um, but there's a whole bunch of places that are um, that are kind of preloaded that you can just click on and get it to change to. But if your place is not automatically included, um, you can add it by just clicking the plus button up here, putting in you know the country name, the place name, the latitude, the longitude, the time zone that it's in, and the elevation. All this information that you should be able to find on your city's Wikipedia page, uh, pretty simply. Uh, we're gonna cancel it. And then come down here and you can add daylight savings time rules um, to make sure that it that it accurately adjusts for your location what that is if you have it, like if you have a daylight savings time for your location. So make sure to change that as well to make it accurate. Um, but change the place, you know, add your place, double click it to, to select it. Whoops, I just selected a nowhere place. Let me go back and do that. Um, and it'll load it up fine. So like I said, the default position is the sun. That's the default one. Um, and that's not really super helpful, but if you come down here, you can also do the moon, Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto, um, or stars. And that's really the one that we want is stars here. Um, and then from there, it'll load up this list of different stars. Um, and it includes all the major stars up to a magnitude of 2.5. So that's kind of everybody that's going to be important. And then if you want to um, add in your own star that's not calculated in here, 
um, you kind of do the same thing like you did for the uh, for the places. Hit the plus button, put in the name of the star and all this information, which we should also be uh, which should also be available on that star's Wikipedia page. So that information should be there. And then here you can go back to the settings and hit the mark dates of visibility phenomena, and you see it makes these little these little jabs on it, um, which you might not be able to see with the grid on, but it makes these little red jabs on it, and that tells you kind of when something's happened to the star. Um, but basically, this program will help you determine what like what's going on with the star at any given time. And so it's automatically set for speaker right now because that was the star I was looking at. So if you go to settings and you go to um, show dates of visibility phenomenon, it'll list them out for you when things were. So you have the eternal rising, the cosmical setting, the last visibility, and the first visibility. And it's these two that you're really kind of interested in. The last visibility would be the heliacal setting of a star, the date and time that is, so September 22nd. Um, 2020 was the last visibility for Spica, and then its first visibility, its helical rise, was October 29th, 2020. So this is a really neat program to use. Um, you can go and you can you know select all those stars, like I said. It's got so many that you can choose from, so many important ones, that especially utilize astrological magic. Um, they're all, all the Bohemian stars are included. Um, and then you can add your own source if there's a lesser known star that you want to include. So absolutely great, uh, a really great tool. I'm really glad I found it. Um, and I'm really happy to share it with you guys. I'll put the link to it, of course, in the description below. And it's just a really great way to kind of walk through and you know how to do it, anything like that. So now that we've kind of walked through the program and I've shared my undying love for Digimon um, with you guys, it's, it might be good to kind of talk a little bit about why this is important, why you would want to know the Halakal Rising of a Fixed Star. So if you haven't already seen it, make sure to go and check out my video that I did of the Genie of the Sky about utilization of fixed stars in astrology. I talk about Halakal Rising set there and kind of walk through an example. But essentially, um, as the sun moves around, appears to move around different parts of the sky throughout the year, you'll notice that the constellations that are visible at a time of year will change. So, you know, during the summer night sky, we'll have pretty good views, pretty good visibility of um, the constellations like Sagittarius and Capricorn, Aquarius, um, you know, Libra, Virgo, uh, and Scorpio. Like, there, there's a bunch of constellations kind of on that half of the sky that you can see pretty well. And then during the winter nights, it's the opposite. You have pretty good views of, like, this Cancer constellation of Gemini, of Taurus, Leo, and Virgo. Um, and that's just because the sun has moved and is kind of covering up different 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 stars in the nighttime sky making the opposite set of stars visible at night and it makes a lot of sense so as the sun kind of moves around in this circle it gets closer to certain stars and you start to see them less and less in the night sky until they're gone until you last see them um, right before the sun sets and then the sun you know moves a little bit closer to it and you can no longer see it because the sun is too bright it covers it up and it's only visible quote during the day when you can't see any stars at all and then the sun you know kind of keeps moving along um, until it exactly conjoins the star and then starts to move away from the star. Um, and then eventually you'll see the star again for the first time right before dawn. So the, that's the heliacal rise. The heliacal rise is the first visibility of a star after a period of being it made invisible by the sun. The reason why this is important is partly because of a kind of cultural and historical calligical significance of certain fixed stars making heliacal rises that we've kind of inherited from the past in our current astrological tradition. Most famously Sirius, whose heliacal rise marked the beginning of the Egyptian New Year and the annual flooding of the Nile River. Um, and so we're kind of carrying that along with us today, where the different fixed star heliacal risings have significance for that fixed star to where they're kind of like a birthday, like the first appearance, the first like, oh, I'm here, here I am, I'm back. Um, the first re-emergence into the world after a period of darkness. Um, so a lot of, uh, kind of the best way to think about it really is by relating it back to moon phase. Um, so you have the moon will be new and where you can't see her when the sun, like when she's exactly conjoined the sun. Um, and then you'll have kind of that next day, that next night where you'll be able to see the moon just after sunset for just a little bit in time when she's now kind of that, that visible fingernail crescent. That, that point in time, that visible fingernail crescent is very similar to the heliacal rise of a fixed star. And it's why many lunar calendars, uh, many lunar based calendars set the first day of the month to be that day when the moon's um, waxing crescent is first visible. It's a time of renewal, you know, starting over, that kind of thing with a fixed star. So when we're talking about astrological magic, why is it important there? Um, well, Austin Kopic in his essay in the Anthology of the Celestial Art offers the heliacal rising time of a star as kind of like an alternative or another 
another timing to utilize for making a talisman for that star. It's like a celebration of that star. It's kind of the closest thing you can get to like a star's birthday or like a holiday about that star or of that star. Um, and so making talismans for that helical rise moment is just another method of utilizing fixed star magic that's not entirely dependent on like the full astrological chart model of like Agrippa, like an Agrippan type model where you put the moon conjoined the ecliptical degree of the star, you put that on the ascendant and you have the moon apply to a planet of the nature of that star. Like this is just another way to do that without having to do all that mess that has this kind of cultural and religious impact that we've inherited from the past. And so, like, determining helical rises has always been kind of a difficult thing, because like I alluded to earlier, they change based on location. Where you are in the world will determine where a fixed star, or when a fixed star, I'm sorry, will experience this helical rise, which makes it very difficult for, for someone like me to say, you know, oh, this date is when the helical rises. And so I produced a infographic a long time ago, several years ago, um, that included information about fixed star magic that included helical rises for my location. And I was kind of able to suss it out pretty well, fairly accurately. Um, but it turns out that based on this calculator, you know, doing it the right way, I was actually off on a number of them by like a day or so. And so that kind of accuracy is important. So I'll need to go back and update that. But this is a way to, you know, to be sure about what the helical rise date is and to be able to utilize that and plan for that in your own astrological magical practices. So definitely go check this out. Definitely, you know, use this um, to as another as an alternative method for timing talismanic rituals with the fixed stars to make fixed star talismans. So good luck. If you have any questions about the program, about Helical Rising, or about making fixed star talismans, I'll put some more resources in the description below, um, but feel free to leave a comment and I'll respond to that too. All right, take care everybody, and I will see you next time.